Welcome back friends and neighbors to this video series on networking. We have talked about transmission control protocol in chapter 9 of the core network protocols. We have also talked about the user datagram protocol in chapter 10 from the packet guide to core network protocols from O'Reilly. So now it's time to talk about some of the things that we use these protocols for. And I thought we'd have a little bit of fun this time with a little different twist on that. So here we go. Remember that most of the stuff that we do on a network has to use either TCP or UDP at layer four. So these are what we call our transport layer protocols. Now there are some exceptions to this. You know, there's some things that occur on a network that don't actually have encapsulation at layer four. But most of the stuff that we do as users requires or needs uh, TCP or UDP. Now when you're using TCP or UDP, you are using one of those flavors of addressing that we call a port. So we have MAC addresses at layer two, IP addresses at layer three, and then ports at layer four. And when we have a TCP or UDP connection, we form what's called a socket. And there are four numbers involved in a socket. You have the source IP address and the source port number, and then you have the destination IP address and the destination port number. And that forms our socket, and this actually forms the basis of all TCP and UDP conversations, and forms what we might call our target for today. Now, in each of the chapters from the second edition, I added some applications, and we're going to talk about those, but I thought it'd be fun today to talk about port scans. Now, when people talk about scanning, well, scanning can be a really large topic. There's lots and lots of different kinds of scans that you might run on a network. Technically, if you're running around doing a war walk or a war drive, you're doing a scan. You're scanning for wireless networks. We can do this sort of everything sort of scan called OS fingerprinting. We have layer two scans. We have IP version six scans capturing all kinds of multicast traffic. But when most people refer to scans, usually, at least my experience has been that they're talking about or thinking about port scans. One of the most common tools to use for port scans is a, is a, a chunk of software called Nmap. And for that reason, most people think that Nmap means port scans, although Nmap can be used for a lot of different things. It is the tool that I used here for these particular port scans, but I just want to be clear that just because I'm using Nmap doesn't mean that you can't use it for a whole bunch of other stuff. Before we get started, let me remind you about clients and servers. Remember that we've got this socket. Client software connects to server software. Client machines can be anything, and server machines can be anything. Often, when you have a server, you're going to be handling requests from a bunch of users. So it's not uncommon for server software to be resident on a server class machine, something that's beefy lots of RAM, lots of processing capability, but it isn't necessarily the case. But I just want to remind you of, of these ideas. MAC addresses are not part of a client-server connection, and any one particular machine can have lots and lots of different clients running on it and then connect to actually separate servers. And this, again, forms the basis for our TCP and UDP connections and forms the basis for the attacks that we're going to be talking about or the scans we're going to be talking about. What is a port scan? Strictly speaking, it's an examination of the status of the layer four ports. That is to say, are these layer four ports open? This is another way of saying, are these layer four ports willing to accept a connection from a client? In an ideal situation, if you're running a server, for example, a web server, it will answer requests from clients on port 80. You do not want that web server to answer requests on any other port. This opens it up for attack. In the same way, if you have an FTP server, 
that is listening to ports 20 and 21, you do not want it listening to port 80. It is also very common for folks to talk about port scans in the context of TCP, but it's important to remember that UDP has ports as well, and servers listen on UDP ports because servers are either TCP servers or UDP servers. For example, somebody that's uh, running simple network management protocol is not going to be listening on TCP ports. They're going to be listening on UDP ports. Same with DNS. So we can do scans that are directed at TCP or UDP, but they behave differently. And so the scan must be accomplished using a different technique. And we're going to talk about both of those today. Let's start with the TCP scans. Now, in order to have a successful TCP scan, we have to remember that TCP uses this architecture of handshakes. There's a setup handshake and a teardown handshake. For a scan, what we care about is the connection handshake. The connection handshake, if you recall, means that a node is going to send a SYN TCP packet or a TCP packet with a SYN flag set and that will be followed by a response from the server with the SYN flag set and also the acknowledgement flag set. And then the client will respond with another TCP packet with the acknowledgement flag set. And this is shown here. We can actually use this to tie up a server. So we're going to talk about port scans today and how that works. But it turns out that if I send a whole bunch of these SYN type packets to a server, the server dedicates resources to those, and if I do it enough, I can actually tie up the server with all these connections, and this is called a SYN flood, which is a form of denial of service attack. So this is the attack topology that I used here for both the chapters 9 and 10. It's a very simple topology, and in this case my attacker was on the same network, but it certainly does not have to be uh, built that way. So in our case, the attacker is 1.99 here, and the target is 1.2. And again, what we're going to do is send TCP packets with the SYN flag set. But the idea of a scan is that we have no idea what the target is willing to listen to. So we have to send a whole bunch of SYN flags to the target. So what we're going to do is craft TCP packets, each with a different destination port number. So if you take a look at the capture in the bottom, we can see that all of these came from 1.99. And all of them were directed at 1.2. And all of them were TCP. And all of them had the same source port. But they all had a different destination port. And they all had the SYN flag set. So that's what's happening here. Now I've only shown you a snippet. I would actually, I could actually do this for all the thousands and thousands of ports that are out there, but I'm just showing you a snippet of what I did. And you can see that these are packets 14, 15, and 16, meaning that the attacker just sent them one after another. That's the anatomy of this basic attack. I'm just going to send a bunch of TCP packets with the SYN flag set, but the targets are different TCP ports on the same machine. So what is our result? In the upper window here, you see the output from Nmap. And we can see that some of the ports are open. So what I've tied together for you are the packets that resulted from the scan. So packet number 52, we can see that the attacker sent a TCP packet with the SYN flag set directed at the target and the, uh, the SYN flag was set. So now that the attacked machine, the target, turns right around and says, I acknowledge that. So we can see that the last packet here, packet number 54, is from the target. And he sends back a packet that says SYN ACK, meaning that I'm willing to accept a connection on this particular port. And that's why port 21 shows up in the Nmap report. However, in the bottom, we can see that the attacker tried to do the same thing on the ports that have the services for SMTP mail and SSH. So we can see that in packets 27 and 28, we can see that these packets have the SYN flag set and that they came from the attacker. But the target 
1.2 responded with a reset flag, meaning that these ports are not willing to accept connections, meaning that they're closed. And so this is why they did not show up in the Nmap report. So that's the difference between an open and a closed port. You're willing to communicate or you're not. Sometimes you won't get an answer, but the behavior that we're looking for that, that clearly indicates nothing is going on in a particular port is that a reset uh, TCP packet has been set, or more specifically, a TCP packet with the reset flag has been set. UDP has a fundamentally different operation than TCP. There are no handshakes. This means that UDP doesn't have to go through the same process. I like to call UDP fire and forget. It's also called a command response, which means that you send a request in and you get a response back. And that's it. So if we take a look at the bottom panel here, we actually have two complete UDP conversations. One is DHCP, one is TFTP. We can see the conversation just goes back and forth. There's no handshake at all. This means that when we scan using UDP, really it's just a straightforward connection request. You ask for something and you get an answer or you don't get an answer. So using the exact same topology, now I'm going to direct UDP packets instead of TCP packets. But remember that UDP doesn't have the SYN flags. So really we're just sending a UDP packet with the, uh, the destination port specified. The key here is that I'm using a UDP packet with a completely different header, completely different mechanism for connecting. And if I get an answer back or an attempt at an answer, then it looks like the port will be open. But we'll see here that if the port is closed, I get a very particular response. The key to a negative response is something called an ICMP destination unreachable. Now, if you forgot what this is, go back and take a look at the ICMP chapter. But it's really just a type of ICMP message that indicates that whatever you are trying to do is not allowed on that box. So in the top panel here, we see the output from the UDP scan. And in the bottom part, we can see what the attacker is up to. We can see that packets coming from 1.99 were simply UDP packets directed at the attacker and at a particular set of UDP ports. Actually, we're scanning all of them. And if they're open, I don't get much of a response from the potential server. But if they're closed, I get something very particular. And that is that ICMP port unreachable. So I've got a couple selected here. We can see that 1.99 tried to hit a destination port of 37,813. And we can see that below that, in the blue, it might be hard to see, but in the blue highlighted one, the target came back with an ICMP destination unreachable. And I've circled that port there in the bottom. An IP packet is sent from the, the target back to the attacker it's got an ICMP message, and then it's kind of weird. It's the, you see a second IP version 4 header, because when you get an ICMP error message, the ICMP error message actually encapsulates some of the packet that created the error. So in this case, the attacker tried to connect on that port. The target said the port is shut down, and it's a destination port unreachable. And by the way, this is the thing that you sent me that caused me to send you a destination unreachable. Well, in your quest for more knowledge, I hope that this discussion on port scans has helped you out a little bit. Remember that we covered uh, chapter 9 and 10 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols, and in particular, we were talking about an attack or a scan that's commonly done against both of these Layer 4 protocols. Next up, we're going to talk about uh, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and we'll see how a, an application uses some of the transport protocols that we've been talking about. And then after that, we'll tackle some DNS stuff. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. And may your packets always reach their destinations.